Hello dear viewers, this is George from Ireland here and um, I'm going to uh, make a forecast about this upcoming Westminster election. Let me be rash enough to do so. Um, and I've had to revise it in the uh, light of opinion polls and other information that's been forthcoming. So, uh, right, let me recap the situation thus far. Uh, the um, election was called about five weeks ago and a lot has happened. Labour's come up in the polls considerably. At first it appeared like the Conservatives were going to win very handsomely indeed. It'd be their biggest landslide ever. They were on 50% in some opinion polls. Labour was way down on 24%. Now the polls have tightened considerably. They usually tighten a bit, but this is way more than one would have expected. Theresa's standing was very high, 60% approval. She's fallen enormously. And uh, Jeremy Corbyn has made, has made great advances in his popularity, which is very surprising. Labour, in some respects, has run a chaotic campaign, some Labour MPs openly criticising Corbyn's leadership. Um, Corbyn has had, some has had some terrible interviews. Diane Abbott, the Shadow Home Secretary, has also performed woefully in some interviews. She is particularly crucial because she's Shadow Home Secretary, and uh, there were a couple of large-scale terrorist attacks during the campaign. So that's another thing. These terrorist attacks, one would expect, would help the government because um, people usually rally to the leader when there's a terrible tragedy like this. Theresa May's response appeared to be robust, rational, bringing troops onto the streets in key locations in support of armed police, and not doing so for electoral reasons, but because she was advised to by um, her uh, security apparatus. Uh, but it also makes means it looks as though the um, prevent strategy is failing, because there were two such attacks. And Labour has focused its fire on the Tories, saying you cut police numbers by about 20,000. In fact, many security experts say that's got nothing to do with these attacks succeeding because um, more money has been given for counter-terrorism and uh, the security services. It's bobbies in the beat. It's low-level policing, which has been cut back. In fact, one doesn't need huge numbers of police to deal with that sort of thing. Um, if you compare the number of police now to the number of police a century ago per capita, there are a lot more now, but they're chasing up things they didn't deal with before, such as domestic violence used to be swept under the carpet. Anyway, I digress. Boris Johnson, one of the Conservatives' big guns, has been largely hidden because he's thought to be such a loose cannon. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, Labour's come well ahead, and in some opinion polls, they're only 3% behind the Conservatives. However, one can have freak polls. In 97, when Labour smashed the Conservatives, there was an opinion poll shortly before polling day showing the Conservatives only five percentage points behind Labour. It was a freak poll. Likewise, 1970, the day before the election, one poll showed Labour 14 points out ahead, and in fact they lost. However, the science of polling has improved enormously since 1970. So um, Theresa May chose not to debate head-to-head -head, um, against um, the other party leaders. It's only the last uh, election that uh, that happened. Um, so uh, she was wise to do so. Someone actually holds office who's on course to win it shouldn't risk it. She had everything to lose, she had nothing to gain. If she performed very poorly, she could hand the election to Jeremy Corbyn. So she wisely chose to be grilled by the public, but not, uh, not um, hello, debate against Jeremy Corbyn as such. Um, so Tim Farron has moved to prove to be a very feeble leader. That's not helping the Liberal Democrats. And they're still doing quite badly in the opinion polls which is a bit of a saving grace for Labour. Um, anyway, so uh, I will tell you my uh, forecast now. I predict the Conservatives will get 350 seats, which is a, just a small improvement for them, 40% of the vote. The Con Labour Party will win 300, sorry, 235 seats uh, and 30% uh, of the vote. Uh, the SNP will have 50 members of Parliament, they will poll 45% of the votes in Scotland. The Conservatives will come second in Scotland, then Labour, then the Liberal Democrats. The Liberal Democrats will uh, win 12 constituencies, including Twickenham. The Lib Dems will have 10% of the vote. I get Twickenham back because Dr Cable was very popular locally. Moreover, it's a very Remain constituency. Although Dr Matthias, the Conservative candidate, is also Remain, uh, the Liberal Democrats have a second referendum on the EU as their flagship policy. Plaid Cymru will only win three constituencies. It's a net gain of one MP. They'll get 20% of the vote in Wales. 
the Greens will win two constituencies. They'll gain Bristol East. They'll win 2% of the votes nationally. UKIP will fall back to 3% of the votes. They will win no constituencies. So that's another big story. Um, the collapse of UKIP. The party will be dissolved within two years. And where are these former UKIP voters going? Some of them will vote to Conservative, as the proponents of the previously did. Quite a few are old Labour voters. Many will not vote at all. They're not going to be attracted by the Greens or the Liberal Democrats, or both uh, Europhile. Um, notice, notably, a lot more people are registered to vote this time, about a million more people than last time. In Northern Ireland, no seats will change hands. The DUP will get 30% of the vote. Sinn Féin, 28%. The SDLB, 12%. The Ulster Unionist Party, 15%. The Alliance, 10%. Um, Sinn Féin does not quite so well in Westminster elections as it does in Northern Ireland Assembly elections, owing to its abstentionist policy. Its voters reason, what point is there in voting for this party if, we're not, if they're not going to take their seats anyway, since they refuse to take an oath of loyalty to her Britannic Majesty? This is because they're separatist uh, outlook. Um, anything else? Yeah, one of the reasons Labour won't do quite so well, as some of the opinion polls suggest, is its support is very soft. Those who intend to vote Conservative, 80% um, of them are, are sure they will actually vote. Labour, only about 60% of those who intend to vote Labour are sure that they will vote. Labour's doing very well amongst the young, people under the age of 30, people who missed out, they came into the job market after the credit crunch and so on. If they have been undergraduates, they've got huge debts, they face zero-hour contracts, low wages, Mortgages out of their reach in almost all cases, um, but also they don't remember the unpopularity of, of socialism in the old days or communism in the Eastern Bloc or what the IRA was like. Anything else about them? Yeah, they're the least likely to vote young people. The older somebody is, the more likely they are to vote. Elderly people have got a lot of time on their hands. They keep apprised of political events because they're watching the news. They're so excited about the election planning to be wheeled out of the nursing home to go to the polling booth, already voting by post. Some people have already started voting. So the Labour has caught up the Conservative Party considerably. It's been too late to make a difference, probably. Those um, who are very sure who they're going to vote for and that they're going to vote are the most likely to actually vote. Um, so that's why I'm saying the Conservatives will win a narrow uh, majority. So perhaps it was the right decision to raise a May to call this election as she's going to win, had she left it a couple more years, things could have, could have gone badly for the economy, her personal popularity would have dipped, the Brexit negotiations might have run into the sand, Labour and or the Lib Dems might have got more credible leaders. So that is uh, my forecast for this UK general election.